An international team of researchers modeled musculature and bone structures of non-avian theropod dinosaurs from experiments with modern dinosaurs to predict how their muscles moved when they walked or ran. The way a living thing moves may seem like a simple and mundane detail. We take it for granted since we, as living things, just love to move around all over the place all the time. Well, most of us. Movement, or locomotion, is a key aspect of behavior in many animals. Understanding and deciphering that locomotion in living and extinct species can help us get a better understanding of evolution, diversification, and extinction throughout the animal kingdom. Since we only have the living world to directly observe and experiment with, getting an understanding of how extinct animals moved requires an understanding of how living things move. Traditionally, this is done by the study of fossilized bones and footprints. The prints tell you how the animal was moving when it made the tracks, and the bones tell you a little bit about how they move and where muscles attached. Bones and tracks offer only an incomplete view. You can only be relatively sure of the size and placement of the muscles, and tracks don't tell you how the animal moves on average. A little thing called computational biomechanics allows researchers to apply universal biology and physics laws to models of organisms' biomechanics, the bones, tendons, and muscles. With computational biomechanics, researchers can resurrect the joints of extinct animals based on the known joints of their closest living relatives, or organisms that convergently evolved similar structures. Non-avian theropod dinosaurs are a bit different from modern dinosaurs. You know, just a tad, maybe just a little bit. One of the biggest mechanical differences between them, aside from the flying, is the muscular tail sticking out the back end of the extinct dinosaurs. Unlike the ultra-lightweight flighty birds, their ancient ancestors were almost entirely terrestrial. Their tails had multiple uses, but getting a grip on those uses and the specifics of it all is a continuous work in progress. Some prior research on dino tails suggested a big use for them was as counterbalance. Those two-legged dinos had big noggins, long necks, and big old arms. The new research adds just straight-up balance to the mix. Lead research author Peter Bishop and friends first needed a model of a living dinosaur to compare it to and use as the basis for an extinct dinosaur model. Their modern analog of choice was the Tinamou, a plump, medium-sized bird related to the large, flightless birds called ratites. Technically, they can fly, but they suck at it and prefer to walk or run. These guys were chosen as they are small, relatively ancient on the bird tree, and walk a lot. Their first order of business was creating a computer model of the Tinamou, its leg bones, tendons, and muscles, and making it move under the computer's mathematical understanding of how soft and squishy things move under the laws of physics. After a virtual walk and run cycle was produced for their virtual bird, the team needed to see if their computer models were accurate, so they compared it to how the real thing walks and runs. Their simulation matched the real bird surprisingly well, off to dinosaur land. For the computer simulation, the skeleton of Coelophysis was used. This dinosaur is known from hundreds of fossil specimens and was one of the earliest known true theropod dinosaurs, so provides a good generic model to work with. They were lithe carnivores, bigger but lighter than a wolf, with a long swan-like neck, pointy snoot, tiny pointy toofers, long springy legs, and muscular tail. With the model made, and its flesh simulated. The researchers ran the simulation and put the darn thing through its paces. Their results showed that these dinosaurs swung their tails back and forth in a figure eight pattern as they ran. This movement was synchronized with the movement of their neck. With closer inspection, the digital dinosaur used its tail to regulate its angular momentum as it ran. In other words, it adjusted its tail against the front of its body to retain balance. The swinging motion of the tail was rather similar to how we swing our arms to and fro as we walk or run. If only we had a tail. To muck with some other parameters, the researchers ran through some simulations with different edits to the dinosaur model. They changed the size in some and removed it altogether in others. Removing the tail forced the dinosaur to exert a lot more energy as it moved. It needed to use 18% more energy to get its sorry carcass moving. 
Since Coelophysis is near the start of the dinosaur family tree, it's likely most dinosaurs use their tails in a similar fashion. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, and Arda Bayer, as well as my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Admin.